Well, hello there, Nick. Hey! Oh, we, the voice is coming out, I'm noticing. Yeah, it's coming out, because, uh, this is D4. This is, I will say right off the bat, much more authentic voice than any of the ones I remember hearing in D4. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So D4 is a game uh. that we're looking at right now. It's a Sweary 65 game. <laughs> uh-huh. And it is an adventure game mm -hmm. based on this fellow right here that we're rubbing his face a little bit. His I'm name is David Young. He is a detective from the Boston Police Department. Now, yeah. I noticed you're rubbing that face with a mouse instead of with a Kinect. That's correct. Let's let's get into that. All right. So this game came out last September for the Kinect, for the Xbox One. <laughs> but it just came out on PC this last week. So right. uh, so that's why we're taking a look at this again. Uh, instead of using the Kinect controls, you know, actually using your hand, you're using your mouse instead. There's uh, a stand in for your, your, your hand. Yeah. Your, your hand. hand. Your hand. Your hand. Uh, yeah. So the reason I'm talking like this, now this, in case you don't know, I'm actually from Rhode Island, but I spent a lot of time in Boston. You don't we say. Have a, we have a similar accent, uh, gotcha. let's say. So uh, a lot of people in this game, since it's set in Boston, and there's so much Boston in it, sort of dripping with Boston references in this mm -hmm. game, uh, I decided, it, you know, in the spirit of D4, to, to speak like my, uh, my natural accent here. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, so this is a, a really bizarre, wacky adventure game about a detective whose wife was murdered and she was murdered and she was murdered and that actually made him able to travel through time because Naturally. he was shot in the head but he still survived but he can travel through time now which is you know a very sweary kind of thing definitely now yeah. have did you play much of d4 on the xbox one i did not this was my first experience with oh, d4 was exciting. on the pc yeah so i i was going in fresh i knew there was a lot of boston here uh, mm -hmm. Certainly, so I was excited about that, and I was—I knew it was a sweary game, and I loved Deadly Premonition. That was an awesome game that you know was kind of broken, but that was mm -hmm. kind of part of the charm. So, sweary games, you know, Deadly Premonition and this and uh, some other other wacky stuff. They're known for being extremely surreal, bizarre, having a lot of weird stuff in them, and that's sort of why people play them. They don't really play them for the you know the mechanical prowess they play them to be in weird worlds where you know bizarre things happen and the writing is very heightened and you know so far we've we've only seen him be basically a detective we've only seen him you know kind of just starting out in his bathtub there coming from a memory but pretty soon we'll start to see exactly what's going on in this game and just how weird all the characters are yeah this game was sort of subdivided into discrete episodes and i only played through the first couple i think i got to about the airplane scene but i did it with the connect and ah. it's it was a weird mix of a game where uh it was kind of janky in the traditional sweary way but the connect controls were oddly good like i remember them kind of making sense and being pretty consistent especially for a connect game uh, how how do you find the mount cuz i mean they the whole pitch of this from from the uh, the article we ran interviewing Swery that Phil Collar did uh, a month or two ago was that uh, they felt like the mouse could be a good stand-in for real life physical interactions, much of the same way a Kinect could be. Do you think they made good on that at all? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's obviously not you know exactly what you'd expect. <laughs> it's certainly right. it's certainly still very uh, you know it's tuned for motion, so it's very forgiving. You know, you can pretty much get away with things as long as you're generally in the right area, generally mm. in the right space. But I think it works for what they were going for. Like, it's kind of a tactile feeling. Like, yeah, you're going to touch this, you're going to move this around, you're going to kind of walk around the space a little bit clunkily. I think it actually works for what they were going for. I think they were going for a, you know, a weird sense and a weird feeling. So here we're going to meet... Uh, a very special character in the game. Oh, this is, yep. Oh, this is Jesus. Amanda. And he oh. is also a good example of the sort of quick time Fucking events. shit. I'm, I forgot about Amanda oh, somehow. Yeah. How Amanda. did I forget about Amanda? I don't know how you could possibly oh, forget my about God. Amanda. How did she sneak out of, like, second life and into this game? I, I don't know. I, Amanda, oh, Amanda's a really special case here. So as we can see... Time for a synchro stunt. Oh, yeah, I, I missed this one because I thought I, I saw the wrong thing. Oh, that meter, thing. yeah. It looked yeah, like I, it was I went clickable. to the wrong place. 
<laughs> with that you know, one, I, I, I am excited to see, like, there were definitely moments with the Kinect controls where it was so weird and bizarre that I almost didn't figure out what to do in time. <laughs> yeah. I'm, my concern was that the mouse stuff was going to take the weirdness out, and I'm really relieved to see that it is still oh, no. a it's totally still there. baffling game. That looks like a Smash Brothers character announcement right there, doesn't it? Really it really does. Me? It's the same font. It's the same yeah. sort of, you know, treatment in the side there. So, Amanda, freeloader, grocery shopper. Uh, this woman is either a cat or she thinks she's a cat. What it's is not, happening? It's not exactly clear whether she is a woman or a cat. Now, everybody talks to her kind of like, you know, kind of like a cat, but apparently she gets food for David. He doesn't go outside his apartment. You know, ever yeah. since this accident with his wife, she was murdered. Ever since then, he doesn't leave his apartment. So, you know, Amanda gets food. You know, maybe that means a dead rat. Maybe that means something else. And, th and this fellow... Teddy. Forrest Kaysen, who is called Teddy for some reason. Mm -hmm. Also, you know, former partner of David's. He helps him. He gives him work. He gives him case files. He helps him out a little bit. And, and what's... Uh, isn't it... Is, I believe it's... I've heard that there is a Forrest Kaysen character in every sweary game. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I'm pretty sure there's definitely one in Deadly Premonition. Yeah, he's, has, a, he's a pretty a big character in Dead Prem. Yeah. Uh, rings a bell right there. For sure. Uh, so he has a little bit of casual misogyny from uh, from Teddy. Men don't yep. stand a chance with women. Yep. Uh, a little bit of Boston uh, Boston cop casual misogyny there. Very right, uh, very realistic. Very realistic. Maybe you know, the most realistic part of the game. It might actually be the most realistic part of the game. Well, that in a scene that we might uh, we might be seeing later when they discuss clam shadow, which I wanted oh, to tell my. you is an actual very true to life thing. People in New England really do feel very passionate about our seafood and, and about our clam chowder. One cool thing about Swery is I remember reading that in the like build up to when he was sort of creating Greenvale for Deadly Premonition, he actually did visit uh, the sort of northwestern oh, United yeah. States to kind of research it. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if he did the same thing with this game. Yeah, I I think that would make a lot of sense. There are a lot of touches that aren't quite real. I mean, it's obviously through a filter of you know a Japanese creator. Yep. Who is also filtered through sort of American pop culture, you know, TV shows about Boston, movies about Boston, things like that. So there's several filters going on here, you know, sort of removed from reality. And that's Swery's thing. You know, he likes to do things, you know, that are a little odd, that are a little Lynchian, that are a little, you know, off kilter. That's his yeah. aesthetic, I guess. That's his charm, I think. Like, <laughs> yeah. that's what I love about Swery is seeing what he thinks America is like. Or, or not even what America is like, but... His, like you said, his, like, reinterpretation of our pop culture is never not just a fascinating, weird thing to watch. Absolutely. And here we're going to go into a scene where they're eating a meal. Now, I found this to be one of the most charming parts of the game, to be honest. I, you know, I like these scenes in Deadly Premonition as well, when people could actually, at the police station, sit down and have a meal. And, of course, Amanda's there doing whatever Amanda's doing, and they're talking about clam chowder. Now, this mm -hmm. is very near and dear to my heart. And also, you notice David here is uh, playing with oyster crackers, and he just That's keeps putting oyster crackers in there. That's the first I've ever seen oyster crackers rendered in 3D in a video game. That it's is true. incredible. It's true. It, and they are rendered beautifully. I would say so. And, uh, you know, I'll tell you, as, as a true New Englander, this is, this is a scene that could have actually played out in real life. How do you feel about the way Forrest Kaysen just grabbed a handful, crushed them in his fist, and then let go? Is that a real technique? That's, yeah, that's proper. I mean, okay. some people actually just throw them in whole hog. They're just right. like, you know, I like having a little bit of crunchiness there. David is just making a mountain of crack of bits, basically. Crumbs in his soup, which, you know, some people do that, too. I mean, he's clearly making a towel Oh, it's here. a big pile there, though. Oh, yeah. It's uh, it's pretty big, and they are arguing here about Manhattan-style clam chowder and New England-style clam chowder. Now, Even is, though they is, say in Boston and New York, it's actually Manhattan and, and New England, but that's all right. They close I have enough. to ask: yeah. is is clam chowder and pizza a common a common meal in your homeland? You know, I've never had them together personally, uh -huh. but both clam chowder and pizza are oh, very popular boy. foods. Let There's me tell a you. five, was that a centuple? Yeah. I, don't, I don't know my number Oh, prefixes. no, he's he's definitely, that's right there, that is an achievement. And a big-ass beer. that, that is, would be if Sam this Adams. Is, that would definitely be a Sam Adams beer, just so sure. you know. I think even the label looks a bit Sam Adams-y right there. This, so. is, this is a borderline offensive depiction of America, that we are <laughs> eating five pizza slices at once and washing it down with a, a basically 40-ounce beer. Yeah, that's, uh, well... <laughs> I have to say, if there's anything realistic about this game, it's got to be that the, 
they are arguing about clam chowder. That is sure. that is a true that is a true depiction of New England. Well, thank you so much, Nick. This has been oh. D4 on PC. I can't wait to hop back in. Oh, absolutely.